Hello and welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In today's video, we are going to add the next 20 creature cards with converted mana cost of 7 into our Momir Vig Cube. Thank you for choosing MTG Burgeoning for your Magic the Gathering content. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and consider becoming a subscriber. Doing so supports the channel and makes you eligible for our various subscriber reward series. If you would like to support the channel further, then click the link to our Patreon page in the description below. There you can join our ongoing Pack Wars series as a one month supporter or ongoing member. Or, try joining Pack Wars for free by commenting on every MTG burgeoning video in a month. We strive to offer creative rewards through our various Patreon tiers. So if Pack Wars isn't for you, then something else will be. Links to our content and various subscriber rewards series can be found in the description below. Send us an email, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. We are your channel for all things magic. What's up, MTGBC? That is the MTG Burgeoning community. Welcome back to another installment of our ongoing Momir Vig Cube series. If you are unfamiliar with the goals and purposes of the series, or just need a refresher, you can search in the description below for a link to MTG Burgeoning's introduction to the Momir Vig Cube. And while you're down skulking around in the description, you can also click the link to Cube Cobra, where you can see the entire contents of the Momir Vig Cube as it stands right now. So for today, we got 20 creature cards with CMCs of 7 going in, and the first is Meteor Golem, a 3-3 Golem that when it ETBs, we get to destroy target non-land permanent an opponent control. So we get to pick the worst creature of the bunch and send it right to the graveyard. Creature number two, for those old school classic Ice Age lovers out there in the audience, we have Minion of Leshrock, a 5-5 demon that has protection from black. During our upkeep, we sacrifice a creature, or Minion of Leshrock will deal 5 damage to us. If Minion of Leshrock deals damage to us this way, we have to tap it, and we cannot sacrifice it to itself. As long as we can manage its very hungry abilities, we can tap to destroy target creature or land. So as long as we can keep feeding it its hunger and making sure it's satisfied, we won't ever take the damage and we can turn it sideways at instant speed to destroy any land or creature that we desire. All right, staying with Ice Age, staying with minions... This time it's Minion of Tevish Zot. It's a 4-4 that during our upkeep we must pay 2 black mana, or Minion of Tevish Zot will deal 2 damage to us. We can tap this to give target creature plus 3, minus 2 until end of turn. At the time that this creature hits the battlefield around turn 7, maybe sooner at 6... Maybe five if you're really, really flying through your um, creature ramp. We can put it that way. The minus two ability may be able to, to pick off some annoying and troublesome little nuisance uh, utility creatures or things that maybe have unblockability or indestructibility or something like that. But that two black mana, you better make sure that you have those basic swamps in your basic land library, or you're going to have to be taking two life at the beginning of your upkeep every single time. Keep in mind, the last two creatures are examples that not every creature in the Momir Vig Cube is going to be uber helpful or uber powerful. Creature number four, going to Mono Red, we have Minotaur Aggressor, a 6-2 first strike with haste. Boy, oh boy, 6-2 with first strike. That's going to be tough to take down. You're going to need to make sure you can block with enough creatures to kill that because six first strike damage is a lot to have to manage on a hasty creature for the investment of seven mana. All right, going back old school once more. We have a colorless edition, and this time it's Mishra's War Machine, a 5-5 five, five artifact creature with banding. During our upkeep, we choose and discard one card from our hand, or Mishra's War Machine deals three damage to us. If Mishra's War Machine deals damage to us this way, we have to tap it. Again, similar to the two minions of this video, Mishra's War Machine is not one of those creatures that you're going to really want to summon to your side of the battlefield. 
Creature number six, our first mono blue edition. It is Mist Form Sky Reaver, a 6 6 flying illusion that we can pay one generic mana and have its creature type become the creature type of our choice until end of turn. This could be game ending if we have any particular tribal synergies on our side of the battlefield. Maybe it's something having to do with zombies, or maybe it's something having to do with goblins or elves or slivers. Having that ability on a 6-6 six, six flyer, well, that's just going to be very, very powerful from the 7 spot. Speaking of power from the 7 spot, our first mono green edition, we have Malimo, the Maro Sorcerer. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and it has trample. So if we're casting or if we're summoning a copy of this on curve, it's coming down as a 7-7 seven, seven trampler that's just going to get bigger and bigger each time we get more lands onto the battlefield. Back to Mono Red, this time it is Molten Primordial, a 6-4 Avatar with Haste. When it ETBs for each opponent, we gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn. We get to untap those creatures and they gain haste. Can you imagine if the stars align and we can get and we can summon a copy of the Molten Primordial to our side of the battlefield? We can handpick the deadliest, most nuisance or problematic creatures from each one of our opponents, either send them into combat or do that, send them into combat, and then maybe we have a sacrifice effect that we can get rid of them at the end of the turn. That would just be amazing. All on the body of a 6-4 Haster itself. All right, creature number nine, we're going back to mono green. It is Moss Bridge Troll, a Shadow Mort original. It's a 5-5 five, five that if it were to be destroyed, we regenerate it. And notice, we don't have to pay any mana. We don't have to activate any abilities. If it gets destroyed, we just regenerate it. You gotta love the Moss Bridge Troll. We can tap any number of untapped creatures we control other than Moss Bridge Troll with total power 10 or greater, and it gets plus 20, plus 20 until end of turn. No, it does not have any evasion, but with the number of cards in this in the Momir Vig Cube that can grant evasive abilities, if you're fortunate enough to have the stars aligned, you could one-shot an opponent with Moss Bridge Troll. It would be a 25-25, and each player begins with 24 life. Creature number 10, we're going back to Colorless, and this time it's the Mirror Battle Sphere, a 4-7 Mirror Construct. When it ETBs, we create four 1-1 one, one Colorless Mirror Artifact Creature Tokens. And whenever Mirror Battle Sphere attacks, we may tap X of these untapped Mirror we control. Yes, we do have other Mirror in the cube as well. And if we do, Mirror Battle Sphere will get plus X plus O till end of turn, and it will deal X damage to defending player. In a format like Momir Vig, where as we've already stated, each player begins with 24 life, and it's a combat-driven um, format, so everything is about creatures attacking, creatures are blocking, and combat damage. If we're able to do any kind of direct damage to help speed up the process of lowering our opponent's life totals, like Mirror Battle Sphere here could do, those are creatures that could be highly, highly valuable if you're fortunate enough to summon copies of them to your side of the battlefield. All right, creature number 11 in our first multicolored edition, we have Ojitai, Soul of Winter, a 5-6 Flying Vigilant Dragon, and it says that whenever a dragon we control attacks, we can tap down target non-land permanent on opponent controls, and that permanent doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. With the number of utility creatures and auxiliary creatures in this format, with the number of creatures that have unblockable or protection, being able to tap that creature down for a round of turns, stapled onto the body of a 5-6 Vigilant Flyer like Ojitai, that may be one of the most powerful 7-drops in the entire cube. Next up and back to Mono Black, we have Overseer of the Damned, a 5-5 Demon with Flying. When it ETBs, we may destroy target creature. Unfortunately, we will not reap the benefits of its second paragraph of text, which reads, whenever another non-token creature an opponent controls dies, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. Remember, every creature summoned from the cube is a token copy, so Overseer of the Dam's second ability will not work. 
but, and that's a great big but, and we cannot lie, being able to destroy target creature upon ET being on the body of a 5-5 flyer, let's not overlook how valuable that is in a format like Momir Vig. All right, next creature, our first white edition. We have the Pale Wayfarer. It's a 4-4 Spirit Giant, and it has an untap ability. We can pay two and two white. We can untap this creature, and target creature gains protection from the color of its controller's choice until end of turn. Aside from any politicking at the EDH, I'm sorry, for, aside from any politicking at the Momir Vig table, let's just say we want to give Pale Wayfarer its own color for block, its own protection if we know that our opponents only have all black creatures or all creatures that have black in them. You can send Pale Wayfarer into combat before blockers are declared. You can tap the two, the two white, untap it, give it protection from black, and swing in for four unblockable damage. But remember, you can only acti activate this ability if you have the white mana to do so, and you need the basic planes in your basic plane library. I'm sorry, you need the basic planes in your basic land library in order to activate it. Sitting down to the Momir Vig table with a basic library of only basic, pla uh, only basic planes, that does not seem like it's a recipe for success. All right, next up, we have another mono black edition. It is Patron of the Nizumi, a 6 6 spirit with the rat offering mechanic, but we're not even going to focus on that because we can't. The rat offering says if we play this card anytime we could play an instant by sacrificing a rat and paying the difference in mana cost between this and the sacrificed rat. But again, we can only utilize our avatar as a, as a sorcery and nothing is cast at instant speed. So we get past that block of text to the only one that matters and it reads whenever a permanence is put into an opponent's graveyard, that player loses one life. So that affects all of our opponents. So as long as they have permanence hitting the graveyard, their life totals are going to tick down. And again, like we've already said, in a format like Momir Vig, where everything revolves around combat and attacking and combat damage, any additional ways we can find to have our opponent's life totals tick southward, they're going to be very, very valuable. All right, the first of back-to-back -back mono green editions here, we have Palaka Worm. It's a 7-7 trampler that when it ETBs, we gain 7 life, and when it dies, we draw a card. Gaining that 7 life may be a lot more valuable than drawing the card, because we're only starting with 24 of it. And next up, it's another worm. It has trample. It's only a 6-6, but it's the Penumbra Worm. When it dies, we create a 6-6 black worm creature token with trample. You have to love the Penumbra creatures, especially in the Momir Vig Cube. All right, next up, we have a colorless edition. It is Pentavis. It's an artifact construct. It's 0-0 zero, zero at ETBs with 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Pay 1 generic mana to remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from it to create a 1-1 one, one colorless Pentavite artifact creature token with flying. You can also pay a generic mana to sacrifice a Pentavite to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Pentavis. So what you're looking at here is the ultimate don't attack me effect. As long as you have the mana available, you can choose to chump block with a pentavite, but before combat damage is dealt, you pay the one mana, sacrifice it, put the plus one plus one counter back on pentavis, and then repeat the process of removing a plus one plus one counter from it to create the pentavite artifact creature token with flying. Rinse, lather, repeat, extend the game for 500 hours. Maybe, give or take a few minutes. All right, the next creature we have is we're down to our last three. This is creature number 18, and this I like to just refer to as you lose. This is kill switch. This is game is over. You got a 1 in 200 shot, and if you are unfortunate enough to hit this one slot in the seven spot out of 200, well, then it's just bad luck for you. Next creature... It's Phage. You knew it was coming. It was only a matter of time until we got to the P-H-A-G-E. Phage the Untouchable is a 4-4 minion legend. When it ETBs, if you didn't play it from your hand, you lose the game. 
instant death right there. You are done. One in 200 shot. If you summon a copy of Phage to your side of the battlefield, the game is over. You don't even get to keep the creature in play because you are no longer in play. You cannot reap the benefits of whenever Phage deals combat damage to a player. That player loses the game. Nope, you don't get that benefit. You don't get to watch... Um, anytime that Phage deals combat damage to a creature, you can destroy the creature. It can't be regenerated. Nope, you don't get that benefit at all. The only thing you get to do is to look down at your board, shake your head, have your opponents laugh at you, knowing that one out of a 200 shot, you summon Phage to your side of the battlefield and immediately lost the game. That is the exclamation point to the part of the cube that has been woven in since its inception. Not every creature is going to be helpful. <laughs> that, that's the exclamation point. All right, number creature number 19, another multicolored edition. We have the Phantom Nishoba. It is a cat beast spirit with trample. It ETBs with 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Whenever it deals damage, we gain that much life. So again, that's going to be fantastic in a format like Momir Vig. And if damage would be dealt to the Phantom Neshoba, prevent that damage and we remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from it. Can you imagine that? You can just continuously send this into combat until there are no plus one plus one counters left on it, meaning it will eventually die without having any of those counters because you can't have a creature with toughness zero and still be alive unless you have a lord or anthem effect. And then each time it's dealing this damage, we are going to gain life. Phantom Neshoba is a very, very sneaky, sneaky card coming out of sneak, sneaky, sneaky creature card coming out of the seven spot. All right, here we go, MTGBC, creature number 20, bringing this video to a close. It is the Phyrexian Colossus. It's 8-8. Eight, eight. It doesn't untap during your untap step. You can pay 8 life to untap it, but it can't be blocked except by 3 or more creatures. So that's like super menace right there. You get to swing once, and if you're fortunate enough to have enough life, you can pay 8 of it to untap it and swing again. But again, this again, this creature highlights the reasons why Phage, the Phyrexian Colossus, and the minions up there at the beginning, and Mishra's War Machine, why they have spots in the cube, because not every creature is going to help you. And there you have it, MTG BC, 20 more into the cube. Let me know which are your favorites in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.